Hello everyone and welcome to my coloring corner. Today is Final Touches Thursday and we will be finishing this picture. Basically uh, what I'll be doing is I will be blacking out the entire uh, background. I will be using the Poetique brush pens. They are a paint, a watercolor paint marker and it the ones we're going to use is dust gray and black and we will be blacking out the entire background and then we will be going over it with some dragonfly glaze which has a really pretty purple I'll show you a test swatch I did this looks terrible but it's just to show you what it looks like so it will have that pretty purple sparkle to it I put way too much down and created a mess but that's okay because this was just a test to see how it would look and I think it'll look really really good like a starry night. So that is what we are going to do. Now this is going to be extremely boring to you. <laughs> so what I will be doing is I will be speeding it up. I will try to make sure the camera stays on what I'm doing but I will add some music. I will interrupt every now and then when I'm going to do something different or when I'm going to change medium like when I'm going to change colors or when I'm going to switch over to this. Like I said, it's going to be very boring, so I'm not going to um, make you watch the entirety of it, <laughs> but at least not without some music. So I will be muting the mic and I will be coloring this whole background with the 72 black from the Poetique as well as 59 dust gray. And I'll show you how this one looks and we're going to use this in the light areas. So as you can see it's got a little bit of a purple and then the black on top of it. And we're going to be using that next to the yellows from the lights in the light areas and then we'll be blending that into the black. So around this area here, we'll be using the dust gray and then the black blending into it. All right, guys, so I'm going to speed it up from this point forward and then I will, like I said, I will break every couple of minutes, tell you what I've done so far as well as what I'm going to do next. All right, so I hope this works out <laughs> uh, and I will see y'all and I'll talk to y'all and of course at the end I will go through everything we did and talk about how well it looks or how bad it looks. This is of course something I've never done before so hopefully I don't completely mess it up. All right guys, enjoy. Thank you. 
Okay, so as you can see, we've got the entire background blacked out, except for these areas around the signage where we want it to be a little bit lighter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my gray here, and I'm going to dip it in some water, and I'm going to start in the areas close to the edge. And we're going to gray those out. I'm going to do it as light as possible around the edges so it looks like there's a light on. And then we're going to bring that gray out to the edge of the tree here. And it's going to start getting a little bit darker. And then we're going to go into that black. And we're going to bleed that black into the gray. Now because I've already got the gray all the way down, I'm going to do the edges now where we're going to bleed that in. And what I'm doing is I'm just wetting the black with the gray, getting it to bleed together. Blend. Blend, not bleed. Blend together. So this area here is going to be darker, but not as dark as the rest of the areas. And I'll take a wet brush and blend that together a little bit better as well. Mr. Choo Choo Drain has said hello. <laughs> now we're getting closer to the light source here, so we're going to start going a, a little bit lighter. So we're going to need to dip in water again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take my water pen and put some water on the palette so that I can dip it more often. Because I'm going to need to uh, keep this end fairly light as we get closer to this light. And I'm just going to bleed that into there like that. under here. And then we're going to blend that into that yellow. If we take over the yellow, we can add a little bit more of the yellow if necessary. Bleeding it out. Then we'll come back through with the with the black and cover up any areas that aren't quite dark enough. And we'll use the same technique where we're lightening it up with a little bit of water. Because it's the color I want, just not as dark as it, and not as light as I want it. It's 
especially close to the light sources. We've got a little bit of pilling going on, so we're just going to wipe that away. It's just because I haven't dried the paper. going over it. Alright, now we're going to go do the same thing down here at the bottom where the door and the sign meet. Dragging that black in, making it a little bit darker around the edge. Just bleeding that together. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing with the black, especially in this area here. Just going to dull that down. so that there's some light coming from the window there. And especially in the edges here. Just going over that edge. We're going to dry it. Make sure it's nice and dry. Then we're going to take our pale yellow. So this is yellow cream. And we're just going to go into that area that we want that light to be. And brighten it up a little bit. Might give it a little bit of water. A little bit of that gray in there. down here as well. Coming off the door there. And off this side. And 
then over here. And up here coming off this window. Okay. And then we're going to dry it again. And now for the scary part, because <laughs> this is where I get scared. All right, so we've got the Dragonfly Glaze. This is a acrylic pa glitter paint, and we will be applying this with some um, paint brushes. Before I do that, I'm going to gently go over everything with a little bit of water. just to make sure that everything is oh, my water pen isn't dropping water just to go over and blend everything together make sure that all of those little lines are it would help if my pen would release water but for some reason it's not releasing water but that's okay it's not a lot of little lines that I saw but there was a few that I wanted to blend out so basically all I'm doing is I'm just wetting the areas that I want to blend together a little bit better so that we have a cohesive coloring there. Though once I get the acrylic on it may not matter but we'll see. This is the part that I haven't done before other than that little tiny swatch. So um, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I don't completely mess it up. All right, so that's that. Now I'm just going to dry this out. Here goes. I still don't like the way that looks, but that's okay. We'll see how we can, what it will do once we put this on there. Okay, so here goes. I need a smaller one for getting into the fi finer details here. So we're going to start down here. And we're just going to fill it in. And of course, this part is going to be very boring for you all. <laughs> so hopefully I don't bore you all to sleep. Just getting into those finer details with this smaller brush. And 
then we'll switch to a bigger brush to finish the rest of the sky. Okay, so let's switch to a bigger brush here. This is just basically a mop brush, so I'm just mopping it on. The larger spaces. I'm trying to smooth it out as smooth as I can get it. Now with this dragonfly paint, it's kind of cool because depending upon which way you look at it, it depends upon the di direction of the light on what color it's going to be. So it's either going to be golden color, or it's going to be red, or it's going to be purple, or it's going to be all three, which is really kind of cool think about it. So no matter which direction this is going to be shining or moving, there's going to be some kind of shine on it. As long as I keep things moving in the right directions. <laughs> so we're getting back into the smaller details. So I'm going to be switching brushes again here in just a minute to a smaller detail brush. The larger areas I'll do with the mop brush, the smaller areas with a more of a detail brush. But I'm trying to keep everything moving in the same direction so that it doesn't look all blotchy. Going back, filling any areas that I may have skipped or missed before it all dries. And this is an acrylic paint, so it does dry fairly quickly. Especially if you put it on really thin. And I'm not trying to get really, really thick with it, because I want it not to look like there's huge brush lines in it. Okay, now we're going to switch over to the more detailed brush here. I'm going to get up into here. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. Once again, just trying to keep things in the same direction. I'm not going to get all the way into those areas, just near the tops and the larger spaces. because it's just a little bit easier. Those flowers are going to shine. 
shadow, the glitter, the shine anyway, so. Just make sure that you get the same amount everywhere. Not little clumps. so that we don't get any major paint brush lines. So that when we dry it, it will dry all in one direction and hopefully look pretty cool. Like I said, I haven't done this before, so this is a huge experiment of uh, how much control I have over acrylic glitter based paint. Acrylic based glitter paint, that's what I wanted to say. And no, I was silly and did not take a picture of this before I did this. <laughs> I should have. Oops. Oh well. It is what it is. I think it'll look okay. I hope. I'm really hoping it'll look okay. <laughs> we'll probably take some white and put in the actual star stars. We might take a, a water brush and move things around just to get those heavier areas smoothed out. I'm just using the small brush coming down here because it's very small thin area. I could use the mop brush, but it's small enough that it's um, just a couple of strokes and it's all done, so I'm not too concerned about that. Jumping out of my comfort zone again. But this whole month is all about jumping out of my comfort zone, so. And some lovely, lovely ladies sent me glitter paints. So, what better to use them on than a night sky? Make it all glittery. Especially around a sweet shop. Come on. Can't get any better than that. Right? <laughs> All right. Now I'm not going to do the bottom underneath because I'm just not going to. But I have done everywhere else. And I'm going to wash that. Then I'm going to take my square. I've got a really big square one here. So I've got a really big square brush here. So as you can see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just dip it in the water glass. Dry it off a little bit. And I'm just going to drag it through that area. Make sure that all of that is cohesive. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Okay. And then we're going to take our heat gun.
and we're going to get it all dry. And then we're going to take our white gel pen and we're just going to do a couple of stars. going to take our heat gun and we're going to take off the tape. So we're going to start down here. And it's much easier to take the tape off when it's not burning your fingers. So, get it started. Once you get it started and get it uh, moving a bit, it comes off a lot easier. Now this bottom part and the top part are going to be a little more difficult because once I remove it from the board, it's going to be harder to keep it, the paper itself down. So we're going to have to, um, you guys can see what I'm doing. Sorry guys, don't mean to jerk you around. You get to look at my lap for a bit. So what you do is you get the, the start of it going, turn it on, and hold down the picture with the heat gun. I'm going to do the same for the top here. And jerk you around a little bit and we're going to get this started. Like that. All right, so we have successfully removed the picture from the thing. Okay, it's still a little damp. I can feel the wet. So as you can see, a lot of water went through it. So it's still damp, but there we have our night sky. And as I said, you can turn it different ways and you're going to see different colors in the sparkle. And I have put some stars in there as well as the Oh, no, we still have some glitter pen to put down. I completely forgot about the chain. Well, let's get our glitter pen. I think we're going to do that in a little bit of gold. Gold, 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 gold. I think this one. Uh, let's see if we can find a metallic gold instead. There we go. All right, let's do the chain, the chain gang. So we're just going to do this in a little bit of metallic gold.
And I'm just going over the whole thing because it's so small that going chain by chain, link by link, would be ridiculous. So I'm not going to do that. But I did put in the chain. There we go. And we're also going to put a little bit of gold here on the door handle. Anything else? What else should we put some gold on? Uh, maybe we'll put some gold here. There we go. Okay, I think that's all the gold we need. <laughs> Before I go, go, go gold crazy here. Alright guys, so that is all done. That is our final touches on the Heart House Sweet Shop by Karen E. Myers. And it is a free page on her uh, Facebook group. So if you have not already joined her Facebook group, make sure you do. Uh, she does every, uh, every once in a while send out a free picture that is not available in the books or maybe available in upcoming books, things like that. But yeah, that is our final bits on this page. I hope you have enjoyed it. I hope it turned out okay. Um, I think I'm happy with it. It's a little still a little damp, so I'm still a little leery of touching it too much. But I think I'm happy with it. I love the cakes. I thought they turned out so nice. I'm not so happy about this little tiny area right here, but it'll work. All right, guys. Until next time. Um, of course, tomorrow is going to be our first impressions Friday, and I received a Valentine's Day gift from my husband. So we will have something to look at tomorrow and review. So until then, thank you all very much for watching. I hope this has been at least entertaining, if not educational, if not just some a little bit of fun. Always remember to like, comment, and subscribe to any YouTube artist that you watch because that does give us a lot of information. And whether you enjoy our channel, whether you enjoy the things that you've seen, or whether or not you don't like anything at all. And if you, you know, do like things, hit that subscribe button. Always remember to ring the bell. Um, a lot of YouTube artists put out a lot of different content. I myself put out a video uh, almost every day and of course I go live on Wednesday and Saturday so if you don't hit that bell you might miss something always be kind to one another and never forget to relax color and stay safe thank you all very much for watching until next time bye bye for now